Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Howell here for Football Pandemonium. Football Pandemonium. And today we're talking Play Calling 101 with Coach Kenny Simpson from Searcy High School in Searcy, Arkansas. Let's get to it. Check it out. All right, today with us we have Coach Kenny Simpson from Searcy High School in Searcy, Arkansas. Uh, he's an author of Find a Way and Coaching Football Like a Basketball Coach. He also has numerous Coach Tube courses available. And today he's going to talk with us about play calling, and uh, he calls it Play Calling 101. Thanks for joining us today, Coach Simpson. How are you doing today? Hey, man, I, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, we appreciate you making time for us. Yeah, no problem, man. I, 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 anytime to talk football is always a good thing. And, uh, you know, you guys putting stuff out like this is great for all the other coaches. Yeah, I hope uh, I hope we reach a lot of coaches, especially in New Mexico, where we don't have access to a lot of this this free stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah well, that's, that's kind of the goal when I got into this. And then, and then uh, the, of course, the Internet, Zoom, people like you made it where you have a big reach where you can help younger coaches when I came up probably when you came up there wasn't a lot of this available you know and so now now it's pretty neat to see it kind of get that way I mean we didn't have iPhones when I came up and now I mean, <laughs> now you can watch everything in the phone in your pocket yep and I think it's helping our game quite a bit I mean these coaches these young coaches now are so much farther along than I was you know at their age sure I won't I won't uh dilly dally too much around if you're ready i'll go ahead and roll through yeah this. it's a it's a kind of i call it play calling 101 you know a lot of times uh younger coaches that's a big question you know this first time they get a chance to call plays and so how do you do that how does that work and you know i think a lot of them don't realize that all the preparation that goes in beforehand before you walk out there on a, on a friday night or whatever night they're calling plays and so it's kind of what this is. It's it's uh, it is geared towards my offense, but it's not. I mean, if a guy runs another offense, they could still probably take a couple things from this. I hope, and and use it. Uh, but this is my contact information. So we get done. You know, if you're listening to this, watching this, and you got another question for me, that's my email. It's actually my cell number. You should be a text. Um, that's my Twitter handle, and I've actually got my own website where. You can find this and a lot of other resources. I try to put them on there uh, pretty inexpensive. So if a guy wants to get on there and get one or two, it won't cost them very much. So anyway, uh, this, like I said, is coming out of my system, but it can be applied to any. So don't think you have to, well, I don't run the shotgun wing tee. Well, I, you know, I think this would work for you, whatever offense you do run, but it is coming out of mine. Uh, we run shotgun wing tee which is basically if you're a spread guy, you would call that 21 personnel. It's going to be a tight end and an H-back, kind of creating a four-man surface on one side and then spread on the other side. And so that's what we run. I've got a lot of spread background, so we do a lot of RPOs and so forth. And so when we're breaking down an opponent, it's a little more difficult for us just because we have, we're have we unique in how we line up. And so, you know, if you're a spread team, you might have three or four films of the, the opponent lining up against two by two or three by one or empty, you know, but if you're running what we run and it's becoming more popular, you don't have a ton of film. How are they going to line up to a tight end and a wing? How are they going to handle tight end with, you know, clothes with trips away? We do some unique formations. And so because of that, we've had to kind of be very diligent in how we decided to come up with a game plan. So I call this just play calling one-on-one, but it is somewhat geared towards what we run. So here's just a couple of tips for you guys as you're going through creating a game plan. One is you want to do as much as you can beforehand. You want to make sure you've done as much work as possible beforehand, but don't be married to it because that can change the minute you kick off. And so, and that's hard for a young coach, for me even, to do a, a week's worth of work you look out there and what you thought you were going to see, you don't see. So a lot of times there are things you want to look for um, and not just get completely into where they're going to line up exactly like this. Because the defensive coordinators get a salary also, and so they're going to move around and do different things. And so once that happens, if you've not prepared for other things, you're, you're, in, tr you're in trouble. So here's usually what we look for 
or breaking down an opponent. We're looking for basic coverage checks that they're going to run. So most teams have a trips check or maybe two trips checks they're going to run. Uh, they may have more, they may be a little unique, but they're pretty much going to have one to two to maybe three checks to your trips. Or if you went twins, they're probably going to have two or three ways they handle that. So for us, you know, we, we're very simple. We only have about three or four concepts we run. So we kind of look at, all right, how is this going to change what we run? Because a lot of our plays change depending on the coverage we're going to get. And so we want to make sure our kids understand, hey, you know, there's a good chance you may see press zero or you may see cover one or you may see kind of a two high shell is what they're going to do. So these are the things we're going to look for. I always look for when is the best time to take a shot? You know, when are, are we going to take a shot and which guy is aggressive? You know, that doesn't mean he's the worst player, but it means there's always that one super aggressive DB who's going to come down head hunting. Well, that's the guy you're going to play action on. You know, that's the guy you're going to try to figure out who he's covering or what he's responsible for and through formations, get him to be the guy that bites on the apple so you can throw it over his head. So you're kind of looking for that. Where can we create a shot? Or it could be a defensive lineman, you know, which guy is super aggressive. We can run reverse or screen, you know, so you're looking for not just shots that are deep, but shots that are, you want to kind of scheme to the guy. I always look for when they go goal line. You know, some teams are different. Some teams will, will stay uh, now with all the crossing routes, will stay in zone all the way down the field. But at some point, they usually are going to check to we're bringing and then we go to a four down or a five down D line and they're bringing the house. When does that happen? And so that will go onto your call sheet, which I'm going to show you my call sheet here in a little bit as when we're going to start changing how we call plays. You know, as you get to whatever that line is, that could be the 30, 25, 20 is the traditional spot. It could be the 10. Then now your play calling sheet for us is going to look a little different. You know, it's going to be, either narrowed down or we're going to like these certain plays. Who are you going after and who are you going to avoid? That sounds very common, but a lot of times as coaches, we spend so much time on the analytics, looking at, you know, they do this, that, and whatever, that we don't recognize, hey, I'm not going to go after this kid. He's better than anybody I got. Or this is the guy we want to attack. And so with us, with a tight end wing, a lot of times if we see them being very unbalanced, we'll use a lot of trades where one side is better than the other then we know that week we're going to line up strong and we're going to shift strong the other way. So we can run at that guy, you know, or it could be in the passing game. We may get kind of a, a balanced set, but we know we're going to throw the ball to the left or whatever side it is. What are they going to key on you? You know, I'm wing T based. So we always look for where their eyes go. You know, are they going to key the line? the play of the line, well, we're going to be very heavy RPO if that's the case. You know, if they're going to keep pulling guards, key down blocks, and we know our RPO games are probably going to be there, you know. Um, our counter game may not be as good. Or are they going to key backfield? If they're going to key backfield, well, now our counter game should be really, really good, and our play action game should be really, really good. And so and that will also set our protection. You know, if we're going to – if they're not reading linemen, we're probably not going to try to influence them with our linemen. We're going to max protect – if they're going to key linemen, then, you know, we're going to use that to kind of mess with them. And then if you know who they're keying, that can set up, of course, all kinds of tendency breakers, trick plays, and all that. So this is my coaching checklist, kind of when I'm rolling through breaking down an opponent. Um, other things we want to scout. So I give my uh, position coaches kind of a list that I want them to look for as well for their position. So for us, again, this is probably more unique to my offense. So uh, – Take what you can take if you don't run the gun tee. Offensive line-wise, though, and this is probably across the board, but we are looking for are they going to be a, what we call a pressure team, an upfield team, trying to cause havoc and get penetration, or are they going to be a technique team? Are they going to be kind of jamming your linemen and reading the headgear? Well, that's going to change how we down block them, how we double team them, how we pass pro them. You know, if they're going to be a big high pressure team, we're probably going to be much more into screens. We're probably not going to try to get as much double team. We're going to probably condense our splits. If they're a technique team, we're probably going to widen our splits. We probably are not going to run as many screens, and we're probably going to have more of the deep passing game because we ought to have more time to throw it. 
Same thing on stances. Can we get any tells? You know, who's the blitzer? What's his pass rush move? What gives it away? You'd be surprised how many times, you know, a kid puts his left hand down, he's going to the, the left gap or right gap, you know, and, and that's just little things that you can pick up on to help your kids. Um, QBs, QBs are kind of the guy you got to spend the most time on, but we want to talk a lot about, hey, who are we want to avoid in the passing game? What do we think their coverage is going to look like? I'm My passing game is a lot different than other people. You know, we don't really read coverage as much as we read a guy. So we're reading, if he does this, we do that. That being said, we want to be able to identify who that guy is during the week so he knows that's the guy I'm reading. Okay, Who's aggressive and passive? We mentioned that before. So third and 10, who's going to be open at the sticks? The passive guy. You know, second and two, who are we taking the shot on? The aggressive guy. So that's just kind of things we mentioned before. QB needs to know that. And then we run a lot of RPO stuff, a lot of read stuff. And so he needs to kind of know what do we think we're going to get? Like, are they going to squeeze really hard and you're going to probably pull it a lot this week? Or have they shown on film? More than likely, you're going to give this ball. So those are things we want to give him. Receivers are pretty simple. A lot of it is personnel and then technique. We will work press man every week, no matter what, because that tends to be the hardest thing for receivers. However, if we're going to see a team that's mainly in zone and that kind of then we're probably three of the four days we're practicing, that's what we're preparing for. Uh, also looking at DBs as far as, again, who's aggressive, who's not aggressive, who's going to get their hands on you, who's going to play, you know, outside leverage, inside leverage, and all that kind of stuff with your receivers. Our tight ends and wings are kind of like our H-backs. So if you're a spread guy, that's what that is. And so they're looking at the same concept as our, as our receivers on the passing game, but the same concept as our linemen on the blocking game. So this is stuff we're looking for as we're kind of getting ready to call a play. You know, we haven't even got to the game plan yet. So now okay. we're – go ahead. Do you put any of that scouting on the kids as far as, I guess, watching the film and them coming to you and saying, Coach, I saw this this week? Or, or do you put it all in a scouting report and hand it to them? We have heard some kids that are, have, are capable – and those kids, we, we it's an open-door policy. You know, we want them to see it because, obviously, we're kind of getting into it here. If they see it, then that's even better. In my experience, I've not had very many of them. Uh, and a lot of times, we encourage them to watch a ton of film. But usually, they're kids. You know, they're watching. They will find out who the best player is. They'll know that real quick. You know, and you'll have a few that are good. And we want them to always feel they're involved. Uh, yeah, we've had uh, we've had some groups that knew everything about opponents by watching film, and then you know yep. you also have the groups that will only watch themselves on film, or mm-hmm. you have some groups that don't watch any film at all. So it's yep. now we ask them all to watch a certain amount, and I've found that we we build in film time with our kids every day of the week, so they're going to get film with their position coach every day that week, and so. At least I know that the quality of film they're getting is probably good. But we've had those exceptional ones and groups even that have been hardcore and watch film. And then we've, there's been times we've adjusted our game plan on something a kid has seen and said, you know, and so we want them to be a big part of it if they want, if they want to. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thanks. No, man, I'd love to have, I'd say what that's, those are the groups you usually win with are the groups that watch that film and break it down. My guess is those groups you had were more successful probably. For sure. Yeah. Um, but here's a statement I make to my coaches and to myself a lot because, and, and really the young coaches, no one cares how much you know. Like, I don't care how much you know. I'm not trying to beat the coach across the field. I'm trying to beat his players. And so it's extremely important that we figure out who can handle what. And this is kind of going right into what we were talking about which kids can handle more. Typically, you're going to have, if you're on a, on a good team, you're going to have two to three guys that are super football IQ savvy. Um, these are those, you know, I'm a big Miami Dolphin. Those are those Zach Thomases of the world that kind of, you know, could just retain information. But you also are going to have the kids, if you give them too much, we call it paralyzation by overanalyzation. You, know, you give them too much and you're going to freak them out. And so you need to find out which kids handle what. And so 
be careful what you give your kids because you don't want to give them too much stuff. You want to give them just enough stuff to kind of keep them in the, involved in the loop and let them play fast. We want them to play super fast. And so one thing that every kid will know is if they're on defense, they're going to know their key. You know, for us on offense, they're going to know the general game plan. Of, hey, this is a pressure team. Here's what we're going to do on this. They're all going to know that. But then you get into those big time details. Usually we're picking two to three kids strategically that we're giving that to. And that really applies more to defense. I've found, now, no offense to offense coordinators, but defensive guys will tend to watch a lot more film. It's a lot because it's more of a reactive uh, spot. And so here's what we usually use 60%, 40%. So these are tendencies. So if a tendency is 60, 40, you know, that's pretty good. And as a play caller, I kind of want to know that. That could be, hey, you know, they 60% of the time on second down, they're blitzing. You know, well, it's not quite 50 50, you know, but I, I, I want to kind of put that in the back of my mind. Let me make a note of it on my play call sheet. 70 30. So you start getting into 70, 30 tweaks where they do this 70% of the time. Well, we're going to probably start to adjust our game plan to that. You know, we're going to start making tweaks to, okay, they are definitely playing this guy to the wide side of the field most of the time. So we're going to kind of assume that's going to happen. All right. You get to 80, 20, and especially on the defensive side of the ball, we'll start building in kind of automatics. You know, we'll start saying, Okay, 80% of the time, they're doing this. Of course, you get to 90%, you're definitely – and at 90, we're probably starting to tell our kids. About 80, 20, 90%, that stuff's going in the game plan that the kids are getting. So they're going to start seeing, okay, this stuff is super important. We know this matters. We want you to know this. So, And you can adjust that however you want to adjust it. I've just found if you give your kids too much, it can kind of overwhelm them. If you kind of keep it in that, they're only getting three, maybe four things that are adjusting their game plan. They can play fast, and you know it's going to matter. You know, if it's 60-40, you tell a kid something, and it doesn't happen, they think you're dumb. So you better be pretty sure you tell a kid that it's going to show up, you know. Um, players game game plan. Okay, we do an all-inclusive. You kind of mentioned this earlier, and so – I give this to the players and probably half of them end up in their locker and then we throw them all away. You know, so really it's more for you as a coach to kind of process. You know, I'm, I, I write things down and I remember them better. Our coaching staff does it. We remember it better. We do have specific areas we want players to read inside of that. So our kids will get a maybe 10, 12 play page game plan. Well, really they only need to read probably a page or two, depending on their position, to get their part of the game plan. You got your ones that want to read all of it, and then as coaches, it helps you kind of process through it, uh, where you get the whole depth chart of their guys and who does what and all that stuff, which is important. Some of your kids may read that one guy they're going against. You know, um, And again, remember which kids can handle the most. Meet with those kids. Try to meet one-on-one -on -one with those kids or two-on-one -on -one or however it is inside of their position groups or as a head coach, and then make sure those guys know what you want them to know. Generally, that's going to be your quarterback. Whatever lineman you have making the calls, usually your center, but it could be a different guy. And then on the defensive side of the ball is usually going to be whatever DB you think can handle it, and then whatever linebacker you think is going to be calling the front. Those four guys have really got to know it on both sides of the ball. And then the big thing for us, we try to stress players over plays. You know, especially, I know this is offensive, and it matters offense too, but defense as well. Like, hey, guys, we want to stop this guy. And kids understand that. Make sure this guy gets stopped. Or on offense, hey, guys, this guy is averaging 15 tackles a game. we got to make sure we find this guy, you know, or this guy has five turnover. You know, we want to make sure our kids understand that. That's language they understand. You go into them talking about four techniques, five techniques, they kind of understand it, but you really want to say, Hey, guys, we need to make sure we're very aware of where 44 lines up. He tips his blitzes. He's their best this. They pick up on that better. All right. Then as you're actually building a call sheet, as you actually are building a call sheet here, here's the things I would make sure you want to include, and you probably might want to include even more. And in a second, I'm going to kind of, you know, I'm going to go back. There we go. This is what my call sheet looks like. So we're going to kind of build towards this. 
So as you're building a call sheet, here's usually what we will put on there. You have your opening script. And that's changed for me. And coaches do different things. Some guys will script out their first 15, 20 plays. I've gone to now where I'll script out my first 10 formations and kind of an either or play. Where I know I'm going to line up in this formation. I'm going to do this shift. I think I'm going to run this, but here's my other play. So I've kind of an either or there. Uh, and I'll go through um, a few things we do on that when I actually get to the script here in a little bit. Third down calls are your big, those are the calls you're going to win and lose the game. Third and fourth down calls are big, and that's when you're going to win and lose the game. And we categorize them separately uh, because, for me, third down in certain areas of the field, we know we're going to punt. But we're going to treat that like fourth down. Third down in kind of the plus territory where I don't have to get the first things. I know that I'm going to go for it, probably. Those calls are a little different. So you do want to categorize those a little bit differently. But you want to have those down because those are the plays where you've got 20 seconds to make a call. And I don't know where you guys are, but I've got about 3,000 helpers behind me shouting out plays they think we should run. You know, that's kind of a tough spot to be in. So you want to make sure you've prepared ahead of time. And not just you, your kids. Like our kids kind of know, I guys, what we like on third down are there any questions? We ask it on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And so at least we know as a group what we want to do. Red zone, I mentioned that before. Where is the red zone? That could be the 30, the 20, the 10. Where is that? Okay, backed up calls. We fortunately this year only had to do that once. You may only do that once or twice a year, but you're backed up at your one yard line. What are you doing? You know, you need to have that in. Shot calls. And gimmicks, you know, again, play actions possibly, kind of throwback screens. That could be whatever you want for a shot call, whatever you want for your gimmicks. That's going to go on there, and you're going to have, be able to access that and probably where you want to run that. Formation shifts, that will change. You know, we're kind of our formations we like this week. Two-minute offense and four-minute offense. A two-minute offense, everybody knows what that is. Four-minute offense, you got to run the clock out. So you need to get two first downs. What are you running? You know, And then I put notes and then influence thoughts on mine. So notes for me, influence thoughts. Okay. I've got a couple plays on here. I've got to remember why I put some of these plays on here. I think this one, oh, this is third down. That's why. This is a third down and seven. Okay. And we're kind of in that, eh, go for it, maybe go for it. So here's kind of an example of third down. Like if I knew this is third down and I was going to punt, I'm probably throwing the ball here, you know, but I knew this is third down. And if I got four or five yards right here, we're probably going to go for it. You know, so we're going to run kind of a, not a gimmicky, but a counter run play and the kid gets the first down on it. But if he didn't get the first, I knew I'm probably going to come back and go for that. I'm fourth and one. I'm kind of an aggressive guy when you're midfield probably going to go for it. And so if you're running third down plays. This would be kind of an example of a third down and kind of medium on our side of the field, as opposed like, as opposed to it. Now the third down at my own 20, I'm probably not running that play unless I'm comfortable to punt, you know? And so just kind of an example, when I'm talking about on third down and fourth downs, of how those are going to be different. By the way, that's a sweet counter play there. So, um, all right. So in the call sheet, Here's the other stuff that goes in there. So you have your kind of game plan specific stuff that I just went through. Then this is the other stuff we always include. It just kind of stays on there each week. It may change a little bit, but it's on there. You need to have a man zero. They come out in man zero and they're bringing a house. And you have not seen that on film. They've not done that ever. But against you guys, they decided that's what they were going to do. What's your plan? Because if you don't have a plan, you're going to throw fade ball, fade ball, fade ball, punt. You know, and that's just, as a young coach, that's what I did. Oh, man, zero, we're going deep. Well, you can't do that all night. You know, you can't go 20% shots all night long. You can if your guys are better than them, but if they're not, that doesn't work. And so you got to figure out, okay, what's our plan if we have this? That's on the sheet. Quarterback gets hurt, second play of the game. What are you doing? You know, so that's got to be on there too. Backup quarterback goes in, here's what we're running. Time sheet. Important. That's a huge one. I think that if the San Diego Chargers had this, they probably would have won at least three more games this year. You know, just understanding how to use the clock. And that, at the highest level, that's tough. At a high school level, it's real tough because you don't even, maybe even have a helper. 
So you need to understand how much time can I burn before um, before we have to punt or whatever it is. And, you know, uh, one of the teams out here in Arkansas actually was on ESPN because they, they kneeled it on fourth down and gave the ball to the opponent. The opponent kicked the field goal, knocked him the playoffs. So it, it matters even with really intelligent guys. And I think that coach is a very intelligent coach to make sure you're very diligent with your time sheet. How much can you burn? How much can they burn? This year for us, we almost won a game because we gave the ball back to a team. I don't think they realized that we could get the ball back. So they ran three kind of not great plays and we got the ball back and had a shot. We didn't win. But we had a shot to win um, because we were aware of this. Mm-hmm. PAT chart. Understand when to go for two and not to go for two. That needs to be on there. Mention gimmick plays. If you got kind of trick set, kind of heavy set plays, those go on there. And then the big one on the bottom plays to get guys the ball. So if you've got kind of a stud somewhere, how are you going to get him the ball? You know, and so uh, that came from a couple of years. I had a kid at receiver and they doubled him. And so we're at halftime. He's such a ball once. Well, that's, that's my fault. And you see this in even the NFL where they go to halftime and this stud has got the ball one time. Well, as a coach, you know, you need to figure out ways to get that guy the ball. And so um, here's our kind of an example of our heavy set. I just put it on here to give you kind of what I'm talking about, like a heavy set or a rent, like a jumbo package. You know, I think it's important to have some flavor. This is my one, but to have some flavor of we got to get a yard we might be a spread team. We're not comfortable in that. Or if you're the opposite, maybe you're an under center heavy team, and now you got to go two minute offense. You need to kind of have a change of pace package. You know, whatever that is for you, this is ours. You know, so we get in this look, which is obviously a very unique look, and then that's kind of our heavy package. So mm-hmm. I'm going st- to end today here. I'm going to kind of go through now. So all of that we just talked about. Here's what it looks like on a sheet. So if you go, we're going to go far right. So over here by play sheet right here, play script. That's what we're going to run the first so many plays of the game. Now, they don't have to be in order for me either. Now, when I first started coaching, to keep it easy, I would run them by order. Okay. Now, as I've called plays for, you know, 10, 15 years now, 15, I guess a while, now I'm okay to move what we call off script. But I want to stay in this group of kind of 10 plays we want to run. If you'll look, I know some of this verbiage is probably freaking people out, but you have, if you'll notice here, that's formation play and who gets the ball. And I've even coordinate coordinated it to, if I want to use our armbands, here's our armband call. And so play caller. And what, what I want to point out is I've got multiple formations. Like you only see a formation getting repeated here and here, everything else is a different formation because as a you're calling opening script, you're wanting to gain as much information as you can. You want to score, but more importantly to me, if we score or don't score, is by the end of about seven, eight plays, I want to confirm all of that stuff I've spent a week trying to do. And some of that will hold up, some of it won't. And you got to be able to really quickly decide that. So you'll know, all right, this game plan is going to work. Not going to work. So that's what we're running. Then you've got plays to run in the first half. I kind of keep a little sheet, and those are basically kind of going to be our shot plays that we knew off of film ought to be there. And then your second plays down here, second half plays, are plays that we probably need to set up in the first half, come back to them later. Now, I've run some of those second half plays around the second quarter if it's been set up. But I would caution you if you're in mistakes that I've made, so I'm going off of what I've done, is I've been in multiple half times where I've taken every shot we have and I'm done. We've shot everything we've got. So now either we're going to draw it up in the dirt or we're going to run our base stuff. So it's, you always want to kind of hold some stuff back to run in the second half. Then I've got, and a lot of times that'll be, I'll leave some blank spots there to use a marker and come in and write them on and circle them for the second half. Then over here, plays we like. So these are my notes to me. You know, basically, if we do this, can we do this? On third down, they're going to do this. I think they're keying the guards. All of this stuff is in there. The bottom right here, you can see my little time sheet, my PAT sheet down there. Middle is all about getting the ball to players. Okay. So you can see my backup quarterback that year was Landon. 
He goes in at quarterback. Here's kind of what we can run. You've got plays to get the ball to these positions and plays to get the ball to this kid. And then you've got false keys, shots, gimmicks, and then heavy plays kind of right down there in the middle. Really, that doesn't change much. Some weeks won't change at all. Some weeks you'll add three or four things in there. Over there on the left, we'll do each week. So these are kind of our down and distance, two-minute offense, screens we like, red zone plays, two-point plays, shot plays, kind of all that. And my man zero is there in the bottom left, if you'll look. So I know we get man zero. Here's kind of the things we want to do. And I think they got cut off. There's another column or two down there. But our five or six kind of calls we want to run if we get this look. So that's really, to me, I'm going to go and stop share here. But that's really, to me, um, our stuff that we run and kind of what we look for as we're calling plays. Coach, what you what, what did I not get in there? Uh, I, th- I think you covered it all. Well, I try. I try. <laughs> it was good. Uh, thank you very much for coming on and sharing that with us. Oh, no problem, man. It's, it's you know, as a, as a play caller, a lot of coaches want to do that. I love doing that for my couch, watching other guys. You know, I'm pretty good, but it's really tough. And I enjoy the, the, the challenge of it, but I think um, a lot of times we're out there calling plays. I know I was out there calling plays off of what I see, and a lot of times you're seeing half the field because you're on the sideline. You're not seeing everything because you don't have the eagle eye view that you've had all week. So it's you got to trust that background stuff that you did is going to play out. And now, um, now with all the all the sideline stuff, I don't know if you have that, Coach. I would highly recommend you guys, even if you have your wife shoot it and you're the only coach on the staff and you look at it, that's made play calling for me tremendously easier because it's confirmed everything immediately. I've got the video footage right there in game, and there's a lot of. It's not cheap. There's a lot of platforms that can provide that. So if you're a young play caller and you don't have that, I would really highly recommend I raise that money and get that sideline. There's a bunch of them you can pick from. All right. Awesome. And I don't sell any of them. So notice I didn't plug one. I just said get one. I'll ask you about that in a second. Okay. (laughs) All right. Well, Thanks to Coach Simpson for coming on, sharing this with us, uh, play calling one-on-one, and we wish you the best of luck rest of the way out. All right, big thanks to Coach Kenny Simpson from Searcy High School in Searcy, Arkansas. Be sure to check out his books, Find a Way and Coaching Football Like a Basketball Coach. He also has multiple CoachTube courses out there, and we'll see you next time.